It's now time we would like to resume this program. Before we start the panel discussion session, we would like to ask our honored guests to give us some of congratulatory remarks. First, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador, Representative of the Government of Japan for Climate Change, Ambassador Suganuma, please. Please proceed up on stage. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. I'd like to uh, thank you for inviting me to the symposium. I'm very grateful. Also, uh, Ms. Figures, uh, welcome uh, to Japan. You have uh, made tremendous efforts as Executive Secretary of the UNFCC and uh, related to the Paris Agreement at the COP24, which was convened uh, last year in uh, December. The implementation uh, policies uh, have uh, been uh, adopted. So, uh, toward uh, full-scale implementation in 2020, the momentum is uh, building up. Recently, in uh, various parts of the world, uh, we're experiencing extreme weather here in Japan. Uh, last year in the summer, we had uh, torrential rain over a wide area, and we had uh, typhoons uh, one after another, and uh, we uh, suffered uh, from uh, record uh, high temperature exceeding 40 degrees uh, centigrade. So the population as a whole uh, newly felt uh, the keen need to grapple with uh, climate uh, change uh, countermeasures. Uh, G20 uh, will be uh, – we have the presidency of the G20 uh, this year for the first time. and. Uh, the G20, which accounts for over 80 percent of the world's uh, GDP, uh, uh, will uh, demonstrate its uh, position and attitude of uh, grappling uh, with uh, various issues related to uh, climate change. I believe it's important for the G20 to demonstrate this posture. And uh, as a country having presidency, it's important that we exert a strong leadership. The first uh, climate sustain sustainability working group uh, will be uh, meeting this week uh, toward uh, steady implementation of the uh, Paris Agreement, uh, the measures and uh, adaptation measures uh, in uh, the context of uh, resilient uh, uh, society building and uh, collaboration with non-state actors uh, on the agenda for discussion. And on the domestic scene, uh, with regard to various uh, approaches in uh, the uh, major countries, uh, and uh, we'll be uh, obtaining findings and information uh, to work on uh, formulating uh, long-term strategies and uh, also to accelerate the studies uh, toward uh, the path of achieving uh, this uh, long-term uh, strategy. Uh, we are presently uh, holding uh, expert meetings uh, with uh, financial and economic academic uh, experts. In uh, Davos, uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe uh, stressed uh, the importance of disruptive innovation for decarbonization and for Japan to uh, lead this uh, effort and uh, to uh, dramatically improve uh, the way uh, the economic society is. We need to gradually uh, uh, we need to uh, come up with goals that is not just a build-up of uh, uh, and a roll-up of uh, the figures that we have, uh, but we need to set high goals and uh, take challenge uh, these goals and uh, power uh, hydrogen and renewable energy, uh, distributed energy systems, C C U S and energy uh, industry and transportation. Uh, we need innovation and and uh, implementation in society. And for a long-term uh, goal achievement, uh, the international society needs to work on this, especially uh, development, uh, developing countries uh, must be assisted in their visions. And uh, I am uh, a part of uh, GCF. Uh, GCF uh, will assist uh, developing uh, countries uh, in uh, dealing with uh, climate change. It's an important entity to assist these countries and uh, public funds and the uh, private sector facility, PSF, uh, through these 
uh, mediums and the small size enterprises and the local uh, financial institutions will be encouraged to uh, participate. Uh, we will uh, coordinate uh, with uh, private uh, sectors uh, to uh, facilitate and promote uh, climate change uh, countermeasures. We feel there is a necessity to do that. And I look forward to very significant discussions taking place uh, at this symposium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Suganuma. Next, from the Ministry of the Environment, Director General, Global Environment Bureau, Mr. Satoru Morishita, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Morishita, Director General at the Ministry of the Environment. Cl Japan Climate Initiative members, uh, I would like to congratulate you for this symposium with uh, Ms. Figueres. I think this is a very timely, opportune event. I have been given only three minutes to make these remarks. Previously, in this symposium, we heard from Mr. Mizuno, Ms. Uh, Professor Takamura, and Ambassador Suganuma. I'd like to make sure that I don't overlap what they have already said. This year is a G20 year. In June, in Osaka, leaders will be gathered. Climate change initiative, we believe this is a very important year. We heard many times over from Professor Takamura, we need to develop a long-term strategy this year. So G20, we have G20. That's something that we need to keep in mind. We need to lead the rest of the world by developing a solid long-term strategy. Now, long-term strategy, Paris uh, Agreement, the growth strategy uh, meeting, roundtable. Mr. Mizuno and Professor Takamura are members of this uh, roundtable. And the government, as government's long-term policy, they need to come up with a strong direction, strong vision. This is a very important point that was pointed out. I agree with that. The change between a goal and a target in 2050, 80% reduction in global greenhouse gases. This is a goal rather than calling it a target. That's the big picture we have. So based on that, we need to think about the growth strategy. So there's the growth strategy aspect and climate uh, countermeasures aspect. We need to keep both in our mind in developing this long-term strategy. And it has to be shared with everyone. We would like to develop a strategy that can be shared by everyone because money, people, various resources will flow in that, into that direction. We will have a good flow. We can lead Japan. We can lead the world with that initiative. Now, in this long-term strategy, the basic understanding that we have at the Ministry of the Environment is there's this local circular resources that will have to be used, for example, renewable energy as well as tourism resources, national parks. All of these things would be have to be used very well and apply that to mobility to capture the needs of the users so that the regions can be reactivated to improve the regions and improve Japan as a whole. So climate change, countermeasures, social, economic issues must be resolved together. And this is in sync with SDGs. We have 17 goals. It's not that they are to be done separately. With one stone, 17 birds could be struck. Social, environment, regional issues, all could be connected and solved together. That is the kind of a world we want to make, and those are the programs that we at the Ministry of the Environment would like to take the leadership to take this forward. So I would like to keep good communication with all of you. And we heard about non-state actors. Their roles are getting bigger in today's time. So I would like to, and we would like to work together with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Morishita. Next, from METI, Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, Director General of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Department, Mr. Yasuhiro Matsuyama, please.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Director General of the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Department of the Inter Energy Agency for Natural Resources and Energy. My name is Yasuhiro Matsuyama. I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, those companies and uh, local governments uh, which are leading in terms of uh, climate change uh, countermeasures and decarbonization are uh, gathered here to discuss uh, to open up the new future. I'm very happy that this is uh, being convened. In Japan, uh, last year, the government has uh, adopted the basic energy plan. Uh, this is the fifth basic energy plan. It's a medium-term energy policy. And uh, in the basic energy plan, uh, the fifth version, a 2030 energy mix has been demonstrated. And uh, it was clearly stated that uh, we would uh, take on the challenge of uh, energy transition and uh, decarbonization uh, toward uh, 2050. It was clearly indicated in the basic energy plan that we would do so. It's not very well known, but on the part of Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, uh, we would take proper steps uh, toward the energy transition and decarbonization. In Japan, 2012, we introduced a feed-in tariff system and uh, rapidly uh, centered around the solar energy, a uh, large introduction of renewable energy has taken place in uh, solar uh, energy last year, 47 gigawatts uh, has been achieved. Uh, this is the second in the world. A, a vast amount of uh, renewable energy has been introduced. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the general public uh, must uh, pay uh, for the uh, renewable energy which is uh, purchased uh, to the tune of uh, 2.4 trillion yen a year. And uh, in various parts of uh, Japan, some uh, residents uh, have not agreed to some of the unplanned development uh, that has taken place, and there is some trouble related to this topic. Uh, an important thing that we have to do in relation to decarbonization is uh, to make renewable energy not just uh, an, uh, an item for investment. We have to make it take root in society. We have to make it something that uh, could support our society, and uh, this is the challenge that we have to uh, answer to. Economy has to be provided for, and uh, it has to provide business for the people. There has to be a compatibility uh, between the two. Uh, put it another way, renew sustainable decarbonization, decarbonization energy-based uh, society, business, and community has to be realized. So uh, we have to take on this challenge of uh, realizing all of these. Looking back on history, with the advent of coal, uh, we had steel making, and uh, bridges were built, buildings were constructed, and our lives had become modernized, and the cities were made, industry was introduced. Uh, with the advent of oil, plastics, and clothing uh, were made. Our lives uh, drastically changed, uh, and with uh, automobiles and uh, airplanes, uh, uh, there was a dramatic improvement in mobility. What we have to take on in terms of challenges is uh, dealing with the issues uh, such as uh, climate change and sustainability of energy, energy. We have to squarely face these issues. And while trying to maintain uh, sustainability of uh, our economic society, we have to overcome uh, these issues, uh, moving away from oil and uh, coal. Uh, this is another challenge. And uh, we have to try to, to uh, realize this. This is another challenge. Perhaps uh, our present technology is insufficient uh, to solve all these issues. Maybe our present awareness uh, is insufficient uh, to uh, realize uh, all of what I have said. What is necessary is disruptive technology, which we must uh, work on. And at the same time, at the government level and the non-government level, or all of you have to change your awareness, and you have to have a strong will to make this happen. RE100 is uh, an approach which I think is very outstanding. This should not end at uh, just a uh, trading of certificates or CSR activity. It has to be 
included in our corporate uh, activity. Uh, the renewable energy development has to be embedded in corporate uh, uh, activity. Hydrogen uh, reduction method of, of uh, steel making, artificial photosynthesis. Our uh, manufacturing process uh, has to be innovated in various ways. And uh, two activities which lead uh, this trend, the citizens and residents uh, must evaluate this properly and highly, and people in finance has to evaluate it highly uh, so that uh, all of this is uh, made uh, visible and uh, is uh, assessed for what it is. So. Uh, with uh, such wishes, I hope that at this symposium, uh, those of you who are in the cutting edge of each sector uh, would uh, conduct discussions which would leave the world. I would also like to learn very much from what you have to say. I should like to express my gratitude to JCI and uh, their staff uh, uh, for uh, their uh, advanced uh, approaches uh, to uh, the various issues and also for the convening of this conference. I hope that the symposium uh, will be a tremendous success. With this, I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Matsuyama. Those were some congratulatory remarks from the three guests. Now we would like to start a panel discussion session now. The theme is what is asked of Japan's long-term strategy. We'll hear from people from various sectors. The moderator will be Mr. Ono. Uh, Executive Director of the Renewable Energy Institute. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Ono from REI. JCI is served by three secretariats uh, entities. One is CDP Japan, and WWF Japan, and REI. These three organizations are working as a secretariat to JCI. In the first part of the program, we had heard many speeches, and in the second part, three non-government sectors that are working on this climate uh, countermeasures, businesses, local governments. Uh, we would like to hear about uh, leading cases. Uh, we would also like to invite uh, Professor Takamura to talk about the long-term strategy of Japan in order to make it something that is meaningful. What do we need to have? That is the topic of our discussion, what is required for long-term reduction strategy in Japan. We will have a um, short presentation, but uh, from my side, I just uh, would like to give you an outline of the long-term reduction strategy, what has been discussed and what are the challenges. Let me just uh, uh, set the frame work of uh, discussion for the panel session. From August of last year, the government of Japan started to think about this strategy drafting. It's not that the government has not been doing anything, but it was done separately in different uh, ministries and agencies. Already March of 2017, the Ministry of the Environment had long-term low, tar uh, low carbon vision that 90% of power source should be coming from low carbon sources by 2050. But the breakdown was not provided. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, sometime this time last year, they may uh, they put together an expert meeting for climate change and recommendations were uh, issued in February and in April. They said that uh, there's going to be more energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy is going to be the center and there's going to be phasing out of uh, coal-fired plants and we lowering uh, dependency on nuclear power. Now, METI, what METI did is two years ago, in April of 2017, they issued a long-term global warming countermeasures platform through international contribution, we are to go carbon neutral. That is the message that was disseminated. And energy basic plan was uh, established in July of last year. 
They said that uh, renewable energy is going to be mainstreamed. That was a very important message. But at the same time, nuclear power and coal-fired plants would continue to be important baseload power source. That is what is in the basic plan. So different ministries had different initiatives. But in August of last year, under Prime Minister Abe, uh, there was this meeting that was created for Paris Agreement long-term strategy. As soon as February, March, April, there could be a report coming out of this meeting, according to some observations. So these will be recommendations coming from the meeting, but at the same time, the government uh, would also be considering long-term reduction strategy. And G20 will be held on the 28th and 29th of June. And there's also going to be environment and energy ministers meeting in the same month. So before that, the government probably is aiming to issue a long-term strategy before these important meetings. So we are in a very uh, important period right now. So what are the challenges for this long-term strategy? Right now, Japan, where it is now, the Japanese government is aiming at 80% reduction by 2050. But there is a midterm target in 2030. So when you have these two goals, you see that the curve of reduction will change after 2030. So even if we are aiming at 80% reduction, the current uh, reduction measure the curve is not steep enough. We need to have a more steeper curve. And as we heard today, two degrees is the assumption here. But we need to shift that to 1.5 degrees, which would, mean, which would mean that we need a sharper reduction. So probably we, there has to be a 100% reduction by 2050. So this is being asked of a long-term strategy. Now, by 2030, Japan's targets are not sufficient. And the biggest problem problem here is that the renewable energy targets are not high enough in energy basic plan in 2030. It's to account for 22 to 24 percent, these renewable energy sources. By 2030, we need to have 40 or 50 percent of power coming from renewable energy. That's the global trend. So given that, we, our target is only about half of that. And coal-fired plants, coal-fired plants, after the earthquake, nuclear power plants were stopped, so 21 gigawatts, uh, there was a plan for that much, and some have already been operated on, but uh, because of various voices, some have been canceled. This is an outdated graph, but 6.8 gigawatts, 6 point eight um million watts have been ca canceled, but 4.6 uh, million uh, watts, uh, gigawatts are still remaining. And energy efficiency. In Japan, we boast that we are an advanced country in energy efficiency, but energy white paper of the METI uh, agency was uh, uh, showing energy efficiency or intensity. During the oil crisis, there was a reduction, but over the past 20 to 30 years, if you look at this graph, energy efficiency improvements have not been made. So it's as if you're wringing a already dry uh, towel to squeeze out more water. There may not be much more that Japan can do. That's the awareness that people may have. Now, carbon pricing, uh, Japan is not uh, introducing any of them. Or yes, there's global warming tax, but the if you look at the tax rate, CO2, 289 yen, it's very cheap. So the price effectiveness uh, does not function. Compared to Western countries, it's only a fraction. So this is something that may need to be revised. I don't think it's a good idea for the moderator to go, to go on and on. So we would like to go to a panel session. We have three panelists coming on stage to explain what they are doing at their company level or at their municipality or local government level. First, from Mitsui Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Bank, or rather, 
It's actually from Sumitomo Chemical, uh, Mr. Komoto, Deputy Director, uh, General Manager of Energy and Climate Change. Mr. Komoto, please. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm Komoto from Sumitomo Chemical. Thank you very much for this great opportunity, a valuable opportunity for me to speak. I may rush through my material, but I'd like to talk about what we are doing at Sumitomo Chemical to take countermeasures against climate change. For operating companies like ourselves, climate change, countermeasures, is very difficult, especially when we operate with materials. We consume a lot of energy, so it's very difficult for us. At some point in time, we may need to go back to the origin of sustainability before we can get this discussion started. In our case, we have the Sumitomo spirit benefiting ourselves and others at the same time. This is the spirit that we have at the company. It's not only to benefit ourselves, but the benefit will have to be enjoyed by the society as a whole. Many companies in Japan, in their corporate principles, they are saying that uh, through their business, they want to make a contribution to the society. So when we think about this climate change issue, this is the principle that we may want to revisit inside the company to go back to our origin of our business to really take effective measures. We have the three pillars for climate change countermeasures. The important thing is management of risk emissions reductions, and the other one is in our business, we want to capitalize on business opportunities. While reducing emissions, we could uh, develop many products to make a contribution on this front. So this is important in terms of our action. As we heard from Mr. Mizuno, how do we disclose information? TCFD, how do we deal with TCFD requirements? That will be an important challenge for us. Now, recommendations of TCFD. Right after the recommendations were issued, we announced our support to TCFD. People ask why. This was a very thick manual in English. We read it. It's not that we read the whole thing to be before deciding that we can approve this, but we looked at the social trends. Back then, already, ESG investing was already underway, and ESG information disclosure was a trend. And two degrees target, we felt that we want to make a contribution to that. There was already that trend. So backed by such trends, we expressed our support to TCFD's recommendations. This is from OECD. It's difficult to read this. Two degrees targets, once they are achieved, what is going to be the impact on the economy? That's what this graph shows. TCFD, there is the Big negative impact, obviously, from TCFD, but at the same time, you have innovation and other benefits to expand economy. But as a business, for example, in our case, Sumitomo Chemical, at our business level, this negative impact will sure be there. What about this side, the positive side? There will be some companies that will be able to enjoy these benefits, and those companies who will not be able to enjoy these business uh, benefits. So risks and opportunities at the company level, regardless of whether you have TCFD's recommendations or not, these are things that you need to consider. So at the company level, when we think about our strategy, in the case of TCFD, governance and strategy, these are to be disclosed. Yes, there are difficulties involved, but today, since Mr. Mizuno gave that speech earlier on, uh, really reminded ourselves that uh, we need to do better. So what we would like to do is we would like to st start where we can to make disclosures. Some of you may know this, that right now, CDP's questionnaires 
is to respond to TCFD requirements. So as we reply to CTP, that could be used as a benchmark. So that is what we are doing, and we are planning to make further disclosure. Second point, risk management, emission reductions. Two degrees or 1.5 degrees, these are the targets. Going forward, the economy will grow, but at the same time, emissions will reduce, will be reduced. So at the company level, normally your business size, when it increases, you normally expect CO2 emissions to grow, especially for companies like ourselves. Uh, that would be the case. but. We need to challenge this unconventional notion of growing our business and reducing emissions. This is SBT. Consistent with two degrees targets, we are to develop our own targets at the company level, and a very large reduction will be required in doing so. Honestly speaking, this is a big challenge, a very big challenge for us. By 2030, we are to reduce emissions by 30 percent. We developed this target, uh, and we were certified in October of last year. And many people say, how were you able to do this? Or how are you going to do this? Are you sure that you will be able to achieve this target? Those are the questions that we get. Of course, we don't know, but this is not a bottom-up target that we developed. This is a target that was developed working back from the two degrees target. So towards this target, uh, we will make a group-wide effort. That is the declaration that we have made. And this is a target saying that we will be making disclosure against this target. Another important thing is that we need to use this as a business opportunity. So we have, from a few years ago, we have been working on Sumika sustainable solutions, not just for climate change, to make a contribution to SDGs. So we will certify our own products and technologies. Our aim is to offer and to appeal our products and services to the society. But at the same time, this is a movement in-house. Inside the company, we have different divisions and groups. And we are telling ourselves to increase the number of products and technologies that will make a contribution to the society. So this appeal, internal appeal, would also be important. We want to make as many products as possible to sell more products so that our sales will go up. This is going to be my last page. Let me skip over to this page. Long-term innovation into the future, which is the topic of today. This is the chemicals industry as a whole. This is the vision for the industry as a whole. This is a carbon circular society. CO2 will be rotating, making a circular motion. And as we do this, we need to take on many innovations. CO2 will have to be converted into various chemicals. CO2 does not include hydrogen. So in the end, we will need hydrogen. So this hydrogen, if you can get hydrogen in large amounts cheaply, when you have that innovation, then there is going to be a transformation, a big transformation in the society. Renewable energy and hydrogen uh, innovation will be very important in order to have such a circular society. So I went very quickly in my presentation, but we hope to do our bit in this regard. Thank you very much for your attention. Sorry, I gave you, I mentioned the wrong title. You are Deputy Director Manager of uh, Energy and Climate Change. Next, I'd like to hand over the microphone to Mr. Kanai from Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Bank. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm from uh, Sumitomo Mitsui Trust Bank. My name is uh, Tsukasa Kanai. The presentation today. Well, actually, uh, there was a report uh, placed uh, near the entrance. Uh, um, uh, I haven't seen the reduction in the number of these books, uh, so nobody has picked it up, perhaps. Uh, this is the uh, climate change report. Uh, it's uh, been in existence before TCFD. 
the target is only uh, climate change uh, uh, in of in terms of this report. Uh, um, but now with TCFT. It's not doesn't completely match the TCFD, uh, but uh, it uh, starts with governance uh, moving on to risk. Uh, that's the structure of this report, and in the future uh, to expand this further. Uh, perhaps uh, they, it should be included in the climate report. Uh, what uh, is being done in terms of uh, climate change uh, countermeasures? Um, uh, this is uh, what the report uh, intends to do. Materiality is the first thing that appears in the report. Uh, within materiality, investment and loans, the companies uh, having impact. Uh, this is uh, considered in materiality. And uh, in related to uh, related to climate change, uh, there's a candidate uh, of uh, materiality. In investment and loans, uh, uh, the impact uh, uh, is uh, the focus. The banks do not uh, provide much information. So my own role, or our own role through investment and loans uh, is to contribute that, uh, in terms of providing information on uh, the impact uh, uh, to the building of society. And uh, it's not only risks, uh, but business opportunities and climate change uh, per se, uh, to uh, see this uh, in terms of materiality. Um, uh, in, through the report, this is what we want to do, see, uh, make a change in how people look at materiality. Uh, we are investors and uh, we provide loans, but uh, uh, we are the recipient uh, from which uh, people buy uh, shares, and materiality is uh, very important. Uh, what uh, a large role materiality plays uh, to the uh, uh, for the companies, we try to make an appeal about this to the investors. Materiality uh, is about uh, uh, corporate governance, risk management, uh, and uh, responding to uh, customer needs. Uh, uh, this is uh, just uh, it, it's in juxtaposition with all of these. It concerns the entire company. Uh, when we look at the corporate, the materiality, they focus on CSR materiality. Uh, that uh, is not sufficient uh, to make an appeal to the investors, and that is how what I often feel. For example, uh, climate change uh, countermeasures business. Um, uh, a company uh, is uh, involved in that, but they do not uh, provide much information in the report. Uh, the climate change uh, uh, countermeasures, if uh, a company feels that's important, it has to be included in the uh, uh, annual report or the integrated report. Otherwise, uh, uh, people will not understand what you're doing. So uh, material how to define materiality and uh, what the company thinks of the materiality for the company as a whole uh, is something that they have to work out. And this is important for the investors. On risk, uh, there's a lot on risk. Uh, when TCFD came out, uh, what surprised us uh, was uh, transition risk. Uh, of course, uh, distribution risk uh, is something that we uh, understood, but uh, transition risk uh, surprised us. It's an economic term. And how to incorporate that into finance is something that we thought about and that we accelerated uh, our efforts to uh, incorporate. And in the world of finance, uh, uh, transition risk, uh, of course, uh, distribution or logistics risk is one thing. But uh, if we, it, uh, there's now a tendency to try this to calculate in money terms. Last week, for example, S&P came out with a, a rating report on uh, credit risk, and uh, they included ESG as a part of this. S&P, uh, several years ago, when I talked to S&P, they said the ESG um, is uh, talked about, but uh, they didn't intend to put this in our rating. But within a year or so, they've included in their rating. To what extent uh, they include uh, ESG is something that I do not know. But they probably look at uh, cash flow related, uh, related to uh, climate change. And uh, it's uh, very highly probable that they will include this in their rating. So for companies, uh, it's not somebody else's problem. And uh, credit risk uh, rating, uh, when you is uh, 
normally uh, centered around bonds, uh, but uh, an extension of this uh, would be loans. Uh, so uh, banks, uh, including ESG as uh, credit uh, standards, uh, is very important. And uh, in uh, bankruptcy risk uh, probability, uh, it's, it's, uh, um, it's being studied to include ESG in this. And uh, this is uh, moving at a fast pace. So for uh, finance as a whole, uh, investment loans and uh, insurance bonds and real estate, uh, um, the, there's a climate change trend that's seen in all of that, and we should not underestimate. And uh, we uh, have to make an appeal about this because we are involved. Climate ex Action uh, 100 plus was uh, talked about earlier. Uh, we are participating. Uh, of the 110 are Japanese uh, businesses. Uh, uh, positive engagement uh, uh, to uh, uh, respond to climate change uh, countermeasures is what we're trying to do. There's a lead. Uh, there are asset management companies who play their lead. And then there are co-leading entities. Uh, uh, there are two patterns. Uh, to uh, several Japanese companies that uh, we uh, believe will play a leading role. It's not just about Japanese companies. Uh, uh, we uh, are taking the lead uh, with regard to uh, uh, oil uh, corporations uh, and uh, with regard to loans. Uh, project finance uh, related uh, approaches is something that we're taking. Other than this, uh, in uh, project fi financing with regard to coal-fired uh, plants, uh, re uh, both uh, for domestic and overseas, uh, uh, we have uh, decided on uh, the principle that we would not uh, be involved uh, in uh, coal-fired uh, uh, plants. It's not divestment, but uh, we will not uh, be uh, basically uh, involved in new uh, coal-fired thermal plants. On business, uh, uh, in the report, uh, you uh, will find the details, uh, so I would refer you to the report. Uh, but uh, I want to make the following point. Uh, simply uh, divesting or stopping or risk management, uh, uh, this is uh, what is clearly uh, happening is creating new cash flow. And uh, this flow is a major one. Uh, the impact of uh, fintech, uh, it's equivalent to the impact that uh, fintech is having on finance. So how to generate the cash flow? Uh, in the future, uh, this uh, will become an important uh, issue for companies. Uh, uh, they will be able to obtain uh, loans. Uh, so the sustainability uh, trend, uh, we hope you will uh, study this and uh, try to uh, seize uh, business opportunities uh, hand in hand with the financial institutions. I have been very brief, but I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kanai. So the third presenter, Director General, Bureau of Environment, Tokyo Metropolitan Government. Mr. Wagai, please. Tokyo Good afternoon. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. My name is Wagai from Tokyo Metropolitan Government. So I'd like to talk about what Tokyo Metropolitan Government is doing to realize a Tokyo with zero emission. First, allow me to do some self-praise. At Tokyo, over the past 10 years, we have been conducting a policy for existing building. There was a lot of investment promoted for facilities with high energy saving uh, performance. This has made a lot of contribution for energy efficiency as well as energy conservation. As we aim for decarbonization, we in Tokyo are working on a variety of measures toward realization of a zero emission city. These are major 2030 targets at Tokyo. First, global uh, greenhouse gas emissions will be reduced by 30% against 2000 year level and also reduce energy consumption by 38% against 2000 levels. This graph shows energy consumption 
and uh, GHG gas emissions. If you look up, up to 2016, energy consumption, the bar chart, is down 21% against 2000 levels. But on the other hand, GHG gases increased by 6%. This is because of uh, CO2 emission factor of power. About half of energy consumption in Tokyo Tokyo comes from power consumption. So factor, CO2 emission factor would be impacting Tokyo's GSG emission levels. But uh, a local government like Tokyo does not have the authority covering the power system itself. So we are to enhance our work from the user side of energy. So in conjunction with GHG gas emissions reductions, we are also having a target to reduce energy consumption as well. Here, this is energy consumption by sector. Those consumptions coming from buildings account for 70% of energy consumption. So given this feature at Tokyo, we have been putting efforts into measures covering buildings. Now, this is the framework of what we are doing vis-a-vis -vis buildings. From the design stage to operation and remodeling stage, and from large-sized to small and mid-sized buildings, they will be covered. And we have a number of system systems that cover these buildings prescribed in our ordinance. And I'd like to talk about Tokyo cap and trade system that applies to large sized buildings. This system covers about 1,200 large facilities, and within five years, this is a mandating reduction of CO2 emissions. And this is a mandatory reduction system stipulated in the prefectural ordinance. And this covers various facilities, including office buildings, commercial facilities, hotels, hospitals, and factories. This also covers government's buildings, including Tokyo Metropolitan Government's building, as well as central government's buildings. Ever since the launch of this program in 2010, this is how it progressed. We are in the second planning phase as of 2016. Compared to the previous period, the reduction has been as much as 26%. Since the start of this project, there have been buildings who have been built newly, so total floor area has increased more by more than 500,000 square meters, but the total emissions of CO2 has been reduced. Of the facilities covered, some have been able to reduce their emissions by 30% per square meters. Some have reduced as much as 50%. This is the questionnaire that we conducted, a survey we conducted in 2014. 70% of the businesses said that uh, the management's awareness about CO2 reduction has been raised. And 70% of them said that they are more active in adopting higher efficiency equipment when they are to replace their facilities. So this is making a contribution to reducing consumption. So as a result of this, in Tokyo, we are seeing realization of reduction of energy consumption. At the same time, the economy is growing. There is decoupling underway. So economic growth and energy consumption are not linked anymore. This could be regarded as conventional wisdom today. Two degrees is the targeted temperature rise, and 1.5% should be pursued. This is the common goal across the world. So Tokyo will be enhancing its measures. In this cap-and-trade system from 2020, we will go into the third period, 
and the mandatory reduction rate will be raised to 27 percent, and we will be giving incentives, not only energy conserv conservation, but uh, renewable energy utilization is to be expanded. Zero emission buildings will be evaluated clearly. We are to change the system so that zero emission buildings could be evaluated. For vehicles, we would like to see higher penetration of electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids as well as fuel cell vehicles. Yes, it is difficult, but uh, in islands, in Hajima, in Ogasawara Islands, solar power is to cover the electricity needs. So such demonstration project is underway for zero emission islands. This may not have been the focus of discussion, but there is a resource loss, food loss, and reduction of um, one-way plastics from a viewpoint of CO2 reductions in the supply chain. So based on these directions, we are to start new programs from next year. First, housing. Thermal insulation performance is to be enhanced, like walls and windows. For those housing that meet the requirements of the TMG, they will be able to get subsidies. And when people make a purchase of higher efficiency, energy efficiency, uh, electronic uh, appliances, they will be able to get uh, zero emission points given by the TMG. And we would also expand the scope of subsidies provided for electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids to individuals as well. And RE100 at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building will be targeted so that all electricity to be used will come from renewable energy. So with your understanding and with your cooperation, we would like to move forward including our budget to work on zero emission Tokyo. Towards zero emission Tokyo, there are regular meetings to be started. And the total budget is 25.9 billion yen. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Wagai. So, we would like to move on to the discussion part. So, to the three of you, and also Professor uh, Takamura, can you come up on stage? We will have a discussion session now. So uh, we'll have a panel discussion with these four members. This is the last uh, item on the agenda today. 5.20 is when we'd like to finish. Uh, so we have about 40 to 45 minutes uh, to have the discussion. At the onset, uh, we have heard from different speakers and there were presentations and Japan's uh, ESG investment and increase thereof. Uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, talked about a very uh, encouraging uh, message at Davos, and uh, uh, the three speakers who have spoken uh, said things which were very positive. Uh, uh, companies and uh, local uh, governments uh, were working hard. Um, Japan's uh, climate change uh, countermeasures, global warming measures. Have we come to a very uh, good uh, level? Uh, are, are we worthy of being evaluated highly by the world? That doesn't seem to be necessarily the case. Uh, so individual companies, uh, there are good examples, uh, but as a whole, as a nation, including uh, attempts made by uh, companies and local governments, if we look at the nation as a whole, we haven't reached uh, the case uh, where our standards are world-class and where we're able to lead uh, the world. So what's lacking? So we'd like to start there. So first, uh, 
Ms. Takamura, uh, you've listened to the three uh, speakers. Uh, I'd like to have you comment on what you have heard. And we have lots of questions uh, from the floor. And uh, uh, there was a lot on uh, coal thermal uh, power generation. Uh, so these are important points uh, uh, which uh, we would like to pick up. So on uh, coal thermal power generation, to phase out the inefficient uh, coal thermal uh, power uh, plants is uh, what has been said. But uh, what is the stance uh, that we should take vis-a-vis -vis, uh, coal uh, thermal power plants? I'd like to ask that of uh, Professor Takamura. And uh, on uh, innovation, uh, there's a lot of uh, positive messages. Uh, but uh, what uh, uh, actually do we need to do on this front? Uh, could we have your comments, please? Thank you very much. Uh, the toughest questions have been uh, given to me. Uh, it's uh, true to form of uh, Mr. Ono to give me such questions. I have listened to the three reports uh, given. So uh, I'd like to uh, ask a few questions uh, rather than offer comments. And uh, this will probably be included in the later discussion and questions from the floor. So let me uh, put out the questions uh, first. And if at some point in time you could answer them. Firstly, uh, Mr. Ono talked about uh, what uh, the companies are doing and what local governments are doing. And uh, in order to uh, promote this uh, further, what do you wish the central government to do? And that's a common question to all. Um, perhaps uh, if uh, someone could answer this question uh, at uh, some point in the discussion, I'm uh, very uh, grateful. And uh, this is Mr. Ono's question rather than mine on uh, coal thermal power generation. At uh, the round table, if you look at the, the website of the round table, how many have seen the web, uh, website of the round table? Uh, every month, uh, information is given, and uh, um, the minutes uh, are given uh, on the website. So please have a look uh, on coal-fired uh, thermal power generation. Uh, for one thing, Japanese uh, companies and also uh, the central government is uh, moving forward uh, with regard to climate change uh, countermeasures or global warming uh, countermeasures. But uh, it's as a result, uh, this is a major uh, reputation risk. Uh, it was clear in COP23 and COP24 uh, what the Japan is doing in terms of uh, international uh, contribution, inclusive of exports. So we're not doing uh, playing such a major role. As for uh, domestic uh, thermal power, coal power generation, uh, uh, there tends to be a very negative stance. But when it comes to new domestic uh, coal-fired uh, uh, thermal power generation, there are still plants. And uh, these, uh, when these are constructed and they, when these are put into operation, It'll be uh, in operation for 30 years, 40 years uh, hence. So uh, the international community uh, and uh, the direction they're pursuing through the uh, Paris Agreement uh, is uh, what is going to happen in alignment with that. And this is a big question mark. And my uh, question is, uh, we have to properly address this reputation risk. Uh, uh, we have to uh, make this part of our strategy to respond uh, to this. And uh, next is on innovation. In the round table, uh, in the second session, uh, we had a major discussion on innovation. And uh, in the third round, uh, we talked about uh, business and finance uh, in relation to innovation. Uh, the economic circles and the financial sectors, uh, the uh, common awareness uh, that uh, people have had is that Japan and Japanese companies have a high level of technology. For example, in uh, the field of uh, renewable energy, uh, the state is a bit uh, obsolete. Uh, but uh, from 2006 to 2011, WIPO, the World uh, Intellectual Property uh, Organization's data shows that uh, the world's uh, uh, IP in renewable energy um, is uh, held by 20 companies, uh, the top 20 companies, out of which 12 are Japanese companies. Uh, and uh, the uh, world, uh, IEA's uh, um, data is such uh, that uh, uh, in Japan we have, uh, we rank among the top in terms of uh, technology. So we have uh, the seeds and innovation and seeds 
But uh, from here on is uh, where we have a common awareness about the issue. Uh, although we have the technology, it doesn't penetrate in the market, or it takes a long time for this technology to penetrate in the market. Uh, at Nagoya University, uh, Professor Amano uh, mentioned this uh, about the LED, and in the the economic sector, the technology that has been developed. Uh, uh, we need to uh, innovate uh, the institution to make this uh, readily uh, penetratable on the market and how to uh, reduce the cost uh, with regard to the seeds. Uh, technological innovation for the sake of uh, penetration is what we have to work on. And that was uh, pointed out. Uh, so uh, technological innovation is very important. Uh, that's a common awareness. But for this to penetrate, go into the market, we need uh, the policies and institutions and uh, innovation uh, to penetrate this technology onto the market. Uh, Japan's uh, technological capabilities as a growth strategy, as an industrial uh, strategy for this uh, to be uh, leveraged, I think uh, what I have said is very important. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Takamura. Let me continue a little more on this topic. In the presentations today, we heard about Japan's financial institutions are now reviewing their stance towards coal-fired plants. Mr. Kanai also talked about that. We received a question for high-efficiency coal-fired plants. Uh, if you could give us your views, uh, there was this question about your stance on high efficiency coal-fired plants. What you're doing at Mr. Kanai's institution, there may be some different positions taken by other companies. Can you talk to this uh, question, please? We do have our own policy. It's not that we're trying to keep in lockstep with other companies. But basically, what we do is both domestically and overseas, all coal, new loans to coal-fired plants would be stopped. But in the past, there are some that we are looking at, or are some we have already extended loans to. We cannot withdraw our money. So it may not appear as if we have stopped providing loans, but for new ones, we're not giving new loans to coal projects. Even if it is super ultra critical, regardless of the technology used, we don't give fresh loans to coal related projects. So we may be slightly different from others. So super ultra critical USC. So those are the highest performance of the coal projects. There is IGCC, further newer ones. But when you look at CO2 emissions, it may not be so different. So that was the impression that I received. And on the innovation side, as Professor Takamura said, everybody agrees that we need innovation. But if you look closely, what do you call innovation? There are some differences. What can be used for the moment may be put aside. Using some technology or developing technology that is to come in the future, that may be the focus. But in Japan, hydrogen usage is focused a lot here in Japan. So in Mr. Komoto's presentation, you talked about hydrogen. In the end, you said that hydrogen is to be used for renewable energy. Is that the case? So usage of hydrogen, I think there are various approaches. So from Sumitomo Chemicals standpoint, if you could uh, share with us your thoughts about utilization of hydrogen. As a Sumitomo, Sumitomo Chemical, we haven't uh, gelled our policy with regard to hydrogen uh, development. Um, a large amount uh, to be produced at a cheap price. That's the basic principle which has to be fulfilled. Otherwise, uh, in the industry, especially in the materials industry, uh, the item does not become uh, used. 
uh, the present uh, uh, hydrogen is uh, used for steam, uh, steel reforming. One ton of hydrogen used uh, uh, generates uh, 10 tons of uh, CO2. Uh, with this as a base, uh, if we bring this to CCS, uh, uh, the story will become a, a little bit different, uh, but uh, based on the present uh, status, uh, it's hard to discuss. So specifically, what are we to do? Renewable energy, uh, ec uh, electrolysis, uh, would that be the answer? How much electricity would you require? And what will be the co cost? Uh, a back of the envelope, a broad uh, calculation can be done. Uh, but. Uh, it doesn't fall within the range which is feasible for companies. Uh, so uh, there has to be further innovation. Otherwise, uh, in the true sense of the world, uh, it, will be not be, it will not become a force which would change the society in the United States or in Europe. Uh, they have a, a broad uh, base of research uh, which is ongoing. And, uh, uh, we will eliminate uh, no uh, possibilities uh, to look for less uh, CO2 uh, generating uh, cheap uh, uh, items, uh, energy that can be produced in large amounts. Uh, but we, we uh, still have to uh, aim uh, to do that. It's not something that one company alone can do. It has to be done on a nationwide level or a global level. It's an important uh, challenge. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Professor Takamura, once again, uh, innovative uh, technology and the development thereof. When it comes to that, uh, the Japanese government uh, focuses on the, on this. Uh, if we look at around at the world, uh, uh, what is the positioning of innovative technology for other countries of the world? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for always giving me difficult questions. Now, technological development, the positioning of such development is very important. This is something that is common amongst long-term strategy. It's not the case that uh, such uh, de technical development is not necessary. That's quite important. But there are two stages, in my view. One is that where there is no solution available today. As Mr. Komoto said earlier, materials sector, that is the case. You cannot just shift to electrolysis. There are certain areas that is not really achievable. So there is a new technology that needs to be innovated. Or existing technology, how do you penetrate existing technology at a cheaper cost? So there is technology available, but whether the market would be willing to accept that to be widespread, there are certain challenges there, and this is also important. In the case of renewable energy, this is a typical example, as Mr. Matsuyama said earlier. This has to be penetrated widely. There is technology already existing, but how do you penetrate it? Institutions, measures, and what about innovation to reduce costs? So we need to think of this in two stages, especially in the case of Japan. We're discussing growth strategy now. So as for the latter, the business community, industry community, there is a strong orientation toward that. They want to make use of existing technology to reduce emissions, but as an industry, it needs to grow. So that's the kind of measures that is being looked for. Thank you very much. So what, Mr. Wagai, my question for you is that in the first round, the theme was there are many programs underway, but in order to raise the efforts at a Japan-wide level, what can be done? Tokyo Metropolitan Government is making some, taking some advanced measures. But as we roll this out on a nationwide basis, what can be done? And as we heard from Professor Takamura, is there any request that you would like to make to the central government, please? Thank you very much for the question. As has uh, emerged in discussions on innovation, uh, proceeding with innovation and to attract investment, uh, for this you need to set ambitious goals. Looking at the EU, uh, 
I'm just wondering um, um, about the objectives that they set for themselves. It's not very certain whether they can actually do it. In Japan, we tend to be very serious, and uh, we talk about what if the objective doesn't materialize? People will be held responsible, and that's the way we think here in Japan. When Japan comes out with objectives, uh, it uh, tends to be an extension of what we have achieved in the past. Uh, we need to be sure that we can achieve uh, objectives when we set them. That's the way Japan is. But uh, uh, we have no time. Uh, there's no time uh, in terms of uh, uh, climate change. We need to set ambitious goals, uh, whether it's a pledge. It's uh, to come up with something that we have to do first, and then we have to backcast uh, from there. If uh, these uh, goals are set, innovation will follow. And uh, it's the same with hydrogen. The technology is there. How to make that cheaper? Uh, and we need uh, innovation to make it cheaper. Uh, there'll be a market, so this will happen. Uh, so investment will be attracted. And the local governments uh, will follow. Uh, they say if the central government uh, will go so far uh, as local governments, we will follow. Uh, so the central government uh, must uh, come up with very ambitious goals, uh, just like the way the EU is doing. I think that's the first step, come up with ambitious goals. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Matsuyama talked about uh, uh, thermal uh, power generation, 47 gigawatts, uh, and the 2030 goals. Uh, this is uh, not uh, the upper limit that uh, we can exceed that. And uh, for 64 gigawatts, uh, uh, that would be the goal for 2030. That's uh, 12 years to go. Uh, maybe we can uh, set uh, goals uh, uh, higher. And 10 uh, gigawatts uh, wind uh, uh, power generation. Um, uh, if we think of those uh, who have gone into the quality assessment uh, stage, uh, uh, we, we think we can do better. And uh, in that sense, uh, as uh, Mr. Wakai said, uh, to set ambitious goals, high goals, uh, what uh, I'm reminded of uh, is uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Uh, in the past, uh, in Japan, uh, we did uh, uh, wind power generation. But uh, we uh, shifted uh, to uh, um, uh, or the Denmark, and uh, so uh, in this connection, uh, it was very important to set high goals. Same question. In relation to what I have said, uh, there are high expectations of the central uh, government. Uh, uh, Mr. Kanai, uh, Mr. Kamoto, in that order, please. Maybe this is coming from a different perspective. You talked about technology being available, but doesn't spread. Yes, elemental technologies may exist, but there has to be the integration. The capability to integrate is still lacking for financial institutions. Risk money, there's a term called risk money. What that means is that when we make an investment, we take risk of the investee company to make investments and loans. In, I think we're in the world of risk money. Risk money is a one-to-one -one relationship. So it's a matter of whether you can take the risk of that company. But when we enter into the world of integration, there's not a single player. You have multiple players. When you have three or more companies collaborating, Japanese companies are not very well at doing this. We don't know how to manage this well. Western companies are very good at this, developing policies, gathering people. Initially, it's free of charge. Later on, you start charging people. How do you coordinate well with others so that you can work in this group. How to do this may not be so difficult to do. By just changing a few things, you might be able to do this, manage this well. Who is going to take the initiative to put together such an effort? Is it the government or businesses making decisions? I don't know, but in any case, it's not risk money taking risk. If it is risk money, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a matter of whether you can take that risk. But when you have multiple people, you'll be sharing risk. So this is a, a risk-sharing notion, creating an environment where people will find it easier to share risks. I think that is what is required right now. Thank you very much. Mr. Komoto, please. 
Well, companies, especially in the materials industry, this may be uh, generally applicable to uh, materials industry. But uh, the theme today is ESG investment and EFG uh, information disclosure. Uh, in, on that front, the companies are looking at ROE or ROI uh, to use uh, capital as efficiently as possible. Uh, that is what they're thinking about. When investments are made, uh, they want to make quick returns. And uh, there is uh, enormous pressure to do that. On the other hand, uh, uh, climate change investment is long term. You have to uh, have a long term view. And uh, there are inconsistencies, inevitably inconsistencies. And uh, to take these invest inconsistencies, uh, if it were us, uh, we have to, uh, we're accountable to the investors. Uh, if it's a, a national affair, then uh, national policies have to be explained. And without an explanation, uh, Japanese uh, companies are very uh, serious about their ROE, and uh, they're very concerned about ROE. Uh, so in view of uh, corporate uh, behavior, uh, you need uh, principles and uh, government policies uh, which are explained. And uh, when this is explained, I think uh, there's a potential for change. Presently, uh, companies, uh, in particular uh, the materials industries, uh, respond quickly when customers uh, tell us to do something, uh, whether it's on the domestic scene or overseas. We think of ourselves as a global company. Uh, so. Uh, Japanese uh, customers or overseas uh, customers, when uh, they uh, talk about uh, doing something about innovation together, we would uh, agree. If the conditions uh, are given, uh, then uh, we can uh, participate. Presently, there is overall uh, pressure. Uh, improvement of efficiency is a pressure that we are feeling in the past uh, several years. But how to uh, strike a balance? Uh, we're doing SBT at the moment, uh, energy conservation investment. Uh, how to view this energy? Prices are very cheap. Uh, then uh, energy conservation investment uh, is not very efficient. Uh, ROE uh, return is not generated. So uh, according to general uh, investment principles, uh, uh, there are investments uh, that do not uh, clear the standard. Uh, but uh, in view of our relationship with the investors, ROE, ESG, uh, we uh, consider all uh, to strike a balance. I believe uh, companies are struggle struggling to strike that balance. And so we need uh, a direction uh, given in terms of national uh, policy or objectives uh, from the central government. If these are given, uh, companies uh, can fill the gap uh, of uh, inconsistencies. Thank you very much. So you want a very big goal to be established by the government and carbon risk company behavior should be set so that uh, carbon exposure would be reduced. So this is another question from the floor. Carbon pricing, introduction of carbon pricing. As you know, there are two types. Carbon tax is one, and emissions trading is another. Setting a limit, upper limit for emissions, and if you go beyond that in reduction, the ex surplus could be sold. If you have a shortfall, you need to go out into the market to buy those emission credits. So a company tried to reduce carbon emissions. These are to set common rules. TNG is working already on this. So I would like to ask Mr. Wagai. You've been working on this for the past 10 years or so, Mr. Wagai. So the significance of carbon pricing uh, can you talk about this, please? In the earlier presentation, as I said, from 2010, we started this. We have been able to reduce by 26%. CO2 redu reductions have been achieved by covered facilities, which was very effective, for sure. For large facilities, I gave you the results of the survey. The management is now quite aware of the problem. Carbon pricing, once it's established, it will have an impact on the business management. 
Yes, there was a lucky aspect with the East uh, Japan earthquake. There was a, a very tight situation on energy supply and demand. So based on carbon pricing, people were already reducing this. So we were able to overcome that difficulty, according to some respondents. So that was quite effective. On the tax side, I would say it would be effective, but carbon pricing shortfall is that there is going to be administrative cost or excuse, excuse me, emission trading would incur some administrative expenses. Thank you very much. Uh, carbon pricing uh, is such that uh, there are different views within the, econ the economic sector. Uh, Mr. Kanai, uh, Mr. Komoto, uh, what are your views on this, please? From uh, the financial sector standpoint, uh, it's just one of the various uh, factors. Uh, as to whether this will become a decisive factor, it may become a decisive factor, but we don't know as of yet. Most probably, because of this, uh, people are not uh, willing uh, to do uh, carbon pricing, or the investor is not willing to uh, do it just because it's there. And uh, I was thinking as I was listening to Mr. Ono, in the short run, uh, well, the most important thing uh, with regard to ESG is not uh, short perspectives, uh, short-term perspectives. Uh, we have to think in terms of uh, five years, ten years. It's a matter of mindset for the investors. So, uh, on the capital market, uh, there's the atmosphere that we should not talk about uh, the short uh, term. So, uh, if we uh, talk about what the growth strategy is uh, three years from now, there'll be people uh, who will find that convincing. Within a different, I meet with uh, different companies and investors, and they say uh, companies only talk about the medium term business plan. Um, uh, they say they want to hear from business managers about uh, what uh, they want five years from now from their company. They just don't want to hear about uh, the profit figures. Uh, that's not the only thing they want to uh, hear about. So uh, they're not seeing eye to eye five years or ten years. Uh, uh, if a company has a growth strategy and then uh, they anticipate the carbon pricing uh, system uh, and the way it is uh, five years from now, I think that uh, might be compelling. Mr. Komoto, as you showed that chart, emissions, in terms of amount of emissions, the steel sector accounts for a large proportion. Even with carbon tax or ETS, still, it is going to have a lot of impact. But what is your view about this? Carbon pricing for companies, this is a sensitive topic. We are operating globally. So this year, in Singapore, we will see a, the introduction of carbon tax newly. We have a big factory in Singapore. Tax rate is still not that high, but this is going to be introduced, which will have an impact on us. So as a company, we need to do risk management. So going forward, we cannot assume that there is not going to be an introduction of carbon pricing going forward. For the management, that will not be a good idea. So for a company, what is most important is whatever the scenario may be, well, we're talking about TCFD, whatever the scenario may be, we need to be resilient as a company. We have to make sure that we are sustainable, and we have to be able to explain this to our investors. We're being asked whether we can explain that. Eight million ton or close to that level of CO2 is emitted because uh, we are in the materials industry. There are many such companies in this sector. Let's say that, simply put, Elibidium would be the risk. That's the potential risk that we have to think about. So many companies are working on internal carbon pricing. It's not the government level carbon pricing as part of regulations. But when company conducts its investment behavior, there are many companies that are working on their internal rules. 
So, whatever the regulation scenario may be, they have to be prepared. So they are preparing themselves for such outcome. You have to envisage that uh, carbon pricing uh, will be introduced. And uh, by so doing, you have to move ahead with corporate strategy. Um, so Tanaka and I uh, uh, were also involved uh, in uh, Environment Ministry's uh, uh, study group. Uh, uh, so uh, perhaps we could turn to Professor Takamura uh, for, to close the discussion on, on carbon pricing on uh, innovation and what uh, Mr. Komoto spoke about, how to promote investment. Uh, I think uh, this is all very related. Of course, uh, subsidies uh, uh, could uh, bring about a new technological uh, innovation uh, to uh, promote uh, present technology uh, to reduce the cost. Uh, and. Uh, uh, to, so you have to uh, include signals so that the market will choose you. And uh, the signals, there are different ways you can incorporate uh, signals. Uh, uh, the, there can be regulations, so there can be uh, other things. Uh, one effective uh, measure which was effective overseas uh, was uh, carbon pricing. So in that sense, uh, in the round table, this was a mood point, uh, a discussion point uh, that uh, Leaving aside uh, what method we would choose in the end, uh, we have to think about uh, uh, broadly innovating uh, or we need uh, uh, policies uh, to uh, promote the decarbonization investment. And uh, uh, we hope that the, uh, internally within the government there will be more discussions on this. On uh, coal-fired uh, uh, power plants, uh, the new uh, plants for installing plants, uh, uh, well, the, the new uh, power companies uh, did not have uh, the power source, but uh, uh, in the 2015, uh, the Energy Agency uh, did some calculation. In 2013, uh, coal price is still the cheapest. Uh, so uh, we have to do something about this. Otherwise, uh, there are lots of uh, users uh, who, who want to use uh, low C uh, power sources, uh, but uh, uh, relative uh, power source uh, price is uh, very cheap. And so it's hard to uh, choose. Uh, in particular, in, uh, with regard to power, that's a major challenge. Thank you very much. Uh, so let us move on to the second theme. Already this has been discussed. Climate change countermeasures for a business. What are the opportunities or for competitiveness of cities? Decarbonization, what is the significance for cities? Generally speaking, decarbonization, climate change countermeasures, these are consistent that there are opportunities. That's the general discussion. But in your programs, if you could give us your concrete examples, actual experiences about the opportunities that you have found, starting with Mr. Wagai. Can you talk about the competitiveness of a city? When we introduced the cap and trade system, there was the fear that companies will leave Tokyo. That was the initial concern that we had. But as you saw, we are seeing an increase of new offices in Tokyo. Companies with high awareness of the environmental issues are now coming into buildings with higher energy efficiency performance. If the building is not efficient, people will leave that building. That's where we are today. Climate change mitigation, high performance buildings and cities will be selected by people. And when we have torrential rain or extreme heat of last year, adaptation measures would have to be taken by cities. And those are the cities that people will come to. So climate change countermeasures. In the past, focus was on mitigation. But going forward, adaptation measures. We need to have our main footing on adaptation measures as well in terms of measures against disasters. We in Tokyo would like to do that to invite more companies to enhance our competitiveness. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Tokyo uh, was involved in uh, air pollution uh, before, and compared to other major cities of the world, we have uh, clean air. And uh, that's one of the competitiveness of Tokyo, that it has clean air. 
And uh, we hope that same uh, would occur uh, with regard to uh, climate change and global warming and residences. The same question to uh, Professor Kanai and uh, Professor uh, to Mr. Kono. Um, how uh, measures have uh, led to the creation of business? Uh, could you talk about this, please? Uh, this is an extension of what has been talked about earlier. In 2005, uh, 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 we uh, issued a paper on uh, how uh, environment considerations would come into uh, a real estate value. Uh, when uh, environmental uh, considerations uh, are made, uh, uh, we said uh, that uh, um, uh, environment considerations uh, would lead to real estate prices going up, but uh, uh, we uh, uh, focused on the uh, nation's CASB system. In particular, newly built uh, buildings had CASB. Uh, so within uh, real estate uh, transactions, uh, what uh, to do about uh, old uh, existing buildings? And we tried to create a CASB for the existing buildings. And uh, there were different uh, committees uh, working on this, uh, so uh, we created uh, CASB uh, real estate. And so we made a certification system, but that did not lead to everything uh, functioning smoothly. So the next thing we did was uh, uh, there's a local uh, government version of uh, CASB and uh, different forms of uh, CASB uh, was studied. The uh, CASB rating and uh, rental price uh, was studied, and uh, there was a correlation. As uh, When uh, environment considerations are made, uh, then uh, the real estate prices go up. It was proved. So in 2005, we submitted a paper, and uh, that was uh, demonstrated as, as a result of our research. And uh, uh, with regard to this paper, we did some had some exchanges uh, with uh, overseas. Uh, uh, there's a WESB, uh, which evaluates investors in real estate, uh, which exists overseas. Uh, uh, WESB, when they uh, evaluate uh, uh, REIT, uh, they do not give a rating unless uh, they uh, make consideration for the environment. Uh, so the WESB uh, standard is used uh, to buy REIT in uh, the United States. Uh, Japanese uh, REITs, unless they consider uh, cons make consideration of the environment, overseas uh, investors will not uh, uh, invest. Uh, uh, so, uh, with regard to the existing uh, uh, real estate, uh, CASB has uh, introduced uh, a similar system. So, uh, creating a market is not easy, uh, but if you take the time and uh, point to a certain uh, direction, follow a certain direction, it will function. And uh, uh, the Tokyo uh, Metropolitan uh, Government uh, System will be incorporated. So the private sector uh, activities and uh, uh, local government uh, activities uh, uh, should be combined uh, to create a policy mix. As a financial uh, institution, we want to contribute to market making, uh, creating a market. Thank you. As we heard, for cities, decarbonization activities would enhance the value of the cities as well as real estate properties. Mr. Komoto, you work in the materials sector. What are your perspectives? In the materials sector, there are many possibilities, different from one area to another. Already, markets are starting to be visible in certain sectors, for example, electric vehicles related areas, for example, lithium ion batteries, there's a fierce battle underway. That business group is making investments at the forefront. So they're in the phase of big competition now, or there are other areas where the market is still not visible. So concrete actions are still not visible in such areas. In our case, agriculture. We have agricultural protection chemicals. So adaptation, that may have some potential. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but with climate change, agricultural sector is vulnerable to climate change. So even if you have less water, there could be crop that is resistance to um, shortage of water or when there are typhoons. You want crops that can withstand strong winds. 
there are various ideas that could be conceived. So by each, in each area, what could happen in the future could be anticipated. And already many companies are starting their own work. So it depends on how visible the markets are. Depending on that distance to get there, the speed at which you move will be different. Thank you. It's not just mitigation. In adaptation, there are business opportunities. Um, Professor Takamura, uh, climate change and business, could you comment on that, please? Thank you. On business, as it was included in the report uh, given in the first part of this program, so I will not say much about this, but uh, emissions or low emission uh, business activities, uh, low emission business activities or no emission business activities, uh, to these businesses, uh, investors and financial institutions give a high rating, and so uh, we need to bear that in mind. And uh, uh, our, in RE100, uh, there's an example of Apple. Uh, supply chain, uh, the totality of uh, the supply chain is being asked to uh, uh, consider these issues. And it's uh, related to the corporate value itself. And local governments, I'm sure there are many representatives of local governments here. Uh, local governments uh, uh, should uh, create an environment uh, where energy can be procured. A uh, low uh, emission uh, energy can be uh, come procured. And uh, I think we've come to a stage uh, where industries uh, located uh, uh, favorably from this standpoint uh, uh, would be uh, treated, uh, rated highly. Kyocera has a zero emission data center, and they created this together with the Hokkaido Ishikari local government and the Yokohama City uh, and other areas. Uh, Yokohama City uh, uh, is cooperating with other local governments uh, to procure uh, renewable energy, and Setangai Ward is uh, doing that with another local entity. When you think about the industrial location, uh, decarbonization, uh, low C approaches are very important. We are starting to run out of time. Earlier, what is expected of the central government? Climate change initiative, uh, JCI, is a government sector initiative. Non-state actor. So what you're doing as well as what others could be expected to do to make a long-term strategy of Japan to be really innovative. Can you give us a one word for each one of you? What we expect, okay? Areas where one single company cannot deal with, for example, network, uh, creating a network, of course, your relationship with the local governments and the central government, and our relationship with investors and global relationships, things that one single company cannot do if JCI and the like could create a movement, it will be easier for us to participate. So your strength could be reinforced by doing that. Thank you. Professor Kanai, please. Uh, per, uh, Mr. Kanai, please. Uh, this may be repetitive of what I said earlier. As ESG investment is evaluating the past uh, to uh, uh, buy and sell shares. What is happening now is totally different uh, uh, to uh, invest in things that will have an in impact in the future. Uh, this policy is, is becoming uh, very clear. And it's a new movement in uh, finance uh, for climate change. If it, something can have impact, uh, um, this involves uh, industrial uh, transition, uh, which uh, has to be uh, an expectation. Uh, when people talk about uh, regulation, uh, that's stifling. It's not interesting. Uh, something that has impact on the future uh, is uh, very important. Impact finance and the flow of this is what we want to align with uh, the totality movement. At TMG, regulation vis-a-vis -vis companies, well, it may be stifling, you said, but to consumers, we need to com appeal to consumers. That's what we intend to do. In August of last year, Team Motainai was created at TMG to conserve energy and to reduce food loss and to reduce the consumption of materials. This was a three-pillar program to start a movement. Residents 
of Tokyo, when they have higher awareness of the environment, that would lead to their consumption behavior, and obviously that would lead to a change in corporate behavior. So creating this kind of a movement would be important. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Takamura, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Komoto uh, said at the outset uh, that Japanese companies are very serious. Uh, maybe they should chill out some and relax. And uh, so, and think about uh, the kind of society that uh, they like to aim for to create. Uh, what uh, when it comes to companies and local governments, uh, and uh, this is related to the goals of long-term strategy. And uh, the companies and local governments and residents. Uh, um, uh, force uh, for this purpose might be drawn out uh, through this. And uh, what, when uh, companies are attempting something, we hope that, that they will make this a success. It's not just about global warming and climate change. Uh, it uh, will uh, reactivate uh, the economy and uh, the region, the community, and uh, uh, will contribute to Japan's uh, growth. Uh, to what extent we can come up with actual examples of this uh, uh, is very important. And the very fact that this is being uh, discussed uh, shows the importance of this. We hope that this will be made a success. Thank you very much to all the panelists. And the first part of the session, these initiatives would lead to higher competitiveness of cities and companies. So the topic of this panel session is what is required for long-term reduction strategy in Japan. So based on these examples, we want to see a bold uh, vision, strategy, and framework to be created. And we would like to bring this panel session to a close at this point in time. Let us thank the panelists with a big round of applause. Thank you very much to the panelists and thank you to the members of the audience who gave us many questions. Now, what remains is closing remarks. The closing remarks will be delivered by Mr. Sue Yoshi, representative of Japan Climate Initiative and special advisor to UNEP Finance Initiative in the Asia Pacific region. Mr. Sue Yoshi, please. Mr. Sueyoshi, the floor is yours, please. The sponsor of this uh, seminar, Japan Climate Initiative, uh, as a representative of this entity, I'd like to offer closing remarks and uh, words of appreciation. I'd like to, first of all, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, we're pleased to see such a large turnout. And uh, for those that have uh, gone up on stage, uh, I'd like to thank them as well. From uh, Washington, D.C., uh, we had uh, Ms. Figueres, so she has just departed, but I'd like to thank her as well. JCI, uh, last year on the 6th of uh, July, started as an entity. And uh, very frankly speaking, uh, we had very little preparation period, and uh, we were launched as a result of this. Uh, from the initial stage, uh, we have uh, collected 105 members, which uh, exceeded our expectations. Uh, presently, we have uh, 342. So uh, every day, we have a new member. And if things go as it is, on the 6th of July, when we're one year old, uh, we will exceed 500 in terms of our membership. That's the very high expectation that I have. And uh, the Japanese uh, corporate culture and uh, within the Japanese society, on issues uh, of the kind that has been discussed, uh, uh, people who uh, use their own voices uh, to speak up uh, about their own views, um, I think they are on the increase, and this is happening. Uh, we as a steering is uh, growing uh, very quickly in the United States, uh, and without uh, much uh, lag uh, uh, from we are steering ourselves or. Uh, uh, 
uh, we uh, as non-state actors uh, in Japan have uh, started to take action, stood up to take action, uh, not too late after the we are still in the movement in the United States. And I believe uh, this is rare in the world. In the United States, uh, there's uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which is uh, uh, one of the most trusted dictionaries uh, in uh, the world. I'm sure there are many in the audience who have used this uh, dictionary. According to reports last year in uh, December on the 17th, uh, uh, it uh, surfaced that uh, throughout the 2018, uh, the word which was looked up the most in 2018 was uh, justice, the word justice. And uh, most probably, uh, this is related to the rem various remarks uh, made by President uh, Trump. Uh, it was in uh, uh, a negative reaction, a rebellion against uh, Trump's remarks uh, that this word justice uh, was looked up. In uh, climate change, justice is also a very important uh, word, climate justice. Uh, climate justice, I believe, uh, broadly speaking, uh, means as follows. Uh, for affluent lives of a relative a few uh, number of people, um, fossil fuels uh, were used. Uh, this has brought about uh, uh, global warming, and the damage uh, was inflicted not on those people that have used fossil fuels, uh, but uh, others uh, who are uh, lead, uh, use, uh, forced to lead, lead meager lives and uh, to try to uh, rectify the injustice, uh, to uh, bring about justice, is uh, probably uh, what uh, climate justice is about. According to Oxfam uh, in uh, the UK, half of the CO2 emissions is uh, due to the top 10% of the world population. And the bottom 50% emit only 10% of the uh, total emissions. Uh, so the, there's an imbalance here. And uh, this is uh, not something that we could overlook. Uh, COP24, uh, I participated in COP24, and I learned many things. COP24, uh, Katwice, uh, in uh, that venue, climate justice uh, uh, was uh, a key word, uh, which was uh, very important. Uh, the Swedish girl, Greta Sandberg, uh, who is uh, a worldwide uh, star, I'm sure you know uh, well about her. To go to school, she left uh, the house. She did not go to school. She sat on the street uh, to uh, strike. Um, and uh, the reason was uh, she wanted uh, adults uh, to address uh, uh, climate uh, change. And uh, this resonated with many people. This was just one person protesting, but it resonated with people over the world. So uh, uh, every week on uh, Friday, uh, 20,000 people, uh, the students uh, do not go to school. And this is the school strike for climate. Uh, and uh, she uh, took the stage uh, at COP24 and uh, made the following speech. She said, uh, I'm a 15-year-old uh, from Sweden, and today uh, I would like to talk about uh, climate uh, justice, climate uh, justice in climate change. And according to what she said, uh, she said uh, there are adults uh, at uh, the COP24. And uh, she said that you all talk about uh, green growth, but uh, uh, this uh, is a bad idea uh, which has not been changed, which brought about uh, much confusion uh, for ourselves. I'm worried about uh, climate justice. I'm concerned about climate justice, and I am concerned about uh, the living planet, she said. Our civilization is uh, such that a small number of people made a lot of sacrifices uh, to obtain a, a vast amount of money. And uh, uh, many are sacrificed uh, for a small amount of people to lead uh, luxurious lives. Many are struggling uh, just uh, to ensure luxurious lives uh, for the wealthy few. 
You say uh, you uh, love your children, you treasure your children the most. But uh, in front of uh, the eyes of your children, you are robbing them of a future. You are stealing their future, is what she said. Under the present system, uh, Uh, you say that uh, problems uh, cannot be solved. Uh, then if that is the case, why do you not change the system? Without uh, changing the system, just to say it's difficult to arrive at a solution is not, uh, it's, just, it's a strange thing to say. Up until now, uh, adults have ignored children. And uh, in the future, you will continue to do so, most probably. Uh, you've uh, probably exhausted your excuses. Uh, you've run out of time. Regardless of whether you like it or not, uh, change is happening. And uh, I wanted to uh, tell you that, that change is happening. And that is what I, why I am here. The real strength uh, lies in people's hands. At the Rio summit, uh, Sevan Suzuki uh, became uh, very famous as she was 12 years old then. Uh, girls at uh, 12 years of age and 15 years of age uh, uh, made uh, these uh, speeches uh, which moved, uh, began to move the world. I participated at the COP24. One thing surprised me. Uh, in uh, various uh, parts of uh, the uh, convention hall, I did not see Uh, two degrees centigrade. Uh, when I saw numbers, it was always 1.5 uh, degrees centigrade, perhaps uh, because I'm interested in uh, cl uh, global warming. The mindset of the people have changed. And two degrees centigrade no longer exists in their minds. It's now 1.5 degrees centigrade. It's difficult, but uh, we sh should uh, not uh, refrain from setting goals just because uh, it's difficult. Uh, we have to set goals and move toward it, work toward it. And I believe uh, this kind of thinking emerged out of uh, COP24, inclusive of members of JCI. I hope that uh, Japan would uh, realize that uh, Japan's prosperity uh, is ensured only in a healthy world. So let us keep uh, 1.5 degrees uh, in mind. And uh, despite the difficulties, uh, uh, let us work hand in hand to challenge uh, addressing uh, the Paris Agreement. And uh, JCI is, provides a uh, very wonderful platform to make this happen. That is our intention. I solicit uh, your continued warm understanding and support for JCI. With this, I conclude my words of gratitude. Thank you very much uh, to all. Thank you very much, Mr. Sueyoshi. With this, we will have completed all the programs for today. And thank you very much for your attendance out of your busy schedules.